okay guys so in this session we are going to discuss first come first serve cpu scheduling in detail we will solve multiple questions on first come first serve so let's start this session this session is going to be very useful and informative so there are few important points i want to tell you before we jump onto the problems as i have already discussed what is a scheduler scheduler we consider as a kernel modules whenever os need to schedule or need to decide which process will be acquiring cpu the scheduler will be caught right so there are certain moments when the scheduler will be caught so these moments i have written here scheduler can be caught in any any of these four conditions the very first condition is when a process completes its execution so the kernel will invoke the scheduler module in case a process or executing process finishes its lifetime then the second case is when a process switches from waiting to ready state so if a process was waiting for io and it switched from waiting to ready state then the scheduler will be called <coughs> then when a timer interrupts occurs so let's say after a time period of time system generating some interrupts and interrupting the executing process the scheduler will be called like we have discussed round robin scheduling okay and then if a executing process voluntarily release the cpu control then also the scheduler will be invoked by the kernel right so please do remember these instances when the scheduler will be called scheduler is a module whenever it will be called it will give a decision in the favor of one of the process those are in the ready queue okay so all these scheduling which we are discussing we are discussing cpu scheduling that means we are applying the scheduling on ready queue or we are discussing the role of short term scheduler right so let us solve a problem <coughs> the problem is given like this there are four processes and these processes p1 p2 p3 and p4 are the process ids and arrival time is given and bus time is also given so arrival time when a process arrives in ready queue we have already discussed the meaning of arrival time and burst time is the required cpu cycle or cpu burst so when we try to solve the scheduling problem try to draw a chart you consider gantt chart so i'm drawing the gantt chart once you draw the gantt chart properly it will be very easy to calculate the n number of things so here n number of things we need to calculate here <coughs> so draw the gantt chart like this so i'm drawing now in this gantt chart we can see that this is the moment zero the very first so this is zero moment let's say now at zero moment if you consider according to the arrival time there is only p1 in the ready queue so if p2 p3 and p4 has not been arrived in ready queue scheduler cannot schedule them so it is obvious that at zero moment of time p1 will be scheduled so when p1 will be scheduled p1 requiring 3 cpu cycles then from 0 till 3 p1 will be executing only so p1 will be executing from let's say from 0 moment to so let's say i am considering this is 3 right but till 3 in ready queue p2 has been arrived and p3 has been arrived okay so when a process arrives in ready queue if a uh, scheduling algorithm is preemptive then the scheduler can be called but here we are applying fcfs and fcfs is non preemptive cpu scheduling so although this p2 has been arrived and p3 has been arrived but that p1 was not interrupted okay because of the nature of the first come first serve right so by this three moment out of this p2 and p3 scheduler need to decide which one will be scheduled and because it is first come first serve 
and P2 arrived early than P3, so P2 will be scheduled. Okay. Now P2 requires 5 unit of CPU cycle, so it will execute from 3 till 8. So let's say this is let's say 8. So CPU is executing from 3 to 8. Right. At this point in time, only one process is in ready queue that is P3 because P4 is not arrived yet. The arrival time of P4 is 9. So if there is only one process, any scheduler by applying any scheduling algorithm will schedule that process. So now the P3 will be scheduled. So once the P3 is scheduled, it requires two unit of CPU cycle. So from 8 till 10, P3 will execute. So P3 will execute from 8 till 10. Right? Now, at this point in time, because P4 has been already arrived in the ready queue at 9, so P4 is waiting for CPU to be switched and all other processes has been finished, so P4 will be scheduled. Now the P4 will be scheduled and P4 requires 4 unit of time. So you consider till 14, P4 will be executing. So this is 14. Right? So this is the Gantt chart. Now we need to calculate the waiting time for each process. So what is the waiting time? The waiting time is process arrives in ready queue and waiting for the CPU control to be switched. So you consider the overall time a process is spending in the ready queue without getting CPU. It is the waiting time, right? So if we calculate the waiting time, so let's calculate the waiting time. So I'm writing in sort. So A part we are solving. So if you calculate waiting time of process one, waiting time actually you consider the process execution time minus arrival time. So, execution time means when the process is start executing. Okay. So, P0 is start executing from 0. Uh, not P0, it is P1. P1 is start executing at 0. And P1 was arrived at 0. So, execution time of P1 is 0. And arrival time was also 0. So, that means waiting time of process 1 is 0. If we calculate waiting time of process 2, the execution time of the process 2 is 3 and arrival time of process P2 is 1. So the overall waiting of process 2 is 2. Then if we calculate waiting time for process 3, process 3 start executing at 8 and arrived at 3. So the waiting time is 5. The waiting time of process 4, it is start executing at 10, arrived at 9, so it is 1. Right? So this is the waiting time. And let's calculate the turnaround time. So it is saying, the B part is saying turnaround time. So if you calculate the turnaround time, in short, I am writing turnaround time as TAT. So let's say TAT for process 1. What is the turnaround time for a process? Actually, the turnaround time for a process is waiting time plus, you can say burst time or service time. So BT means burst time. So I am writing BT. It is burst time. Or required CPU cycle, right? So when we add waiting time into burst time, we will get the turnaround time. Okay. One more definition or formula is existing for turnaround time that we consider the the finish time or completion time of the process. So we say CT means completion time minus arrival time. AT means arrival time. So you remember these two formula. It depends upon the given data which formula will be applicable. So turnaround time can be calculated in two ways. One is waiting time plus burst time. Another is completion time of the process minus arrival time of the process. So I am writing CT is completion time
एंड ए टी अराइवल टाइम ओके सो हियर दिस फॉर्मूला सी टी एंड ए टी वी आर नॉट गोइंग टू अप्लाई वी कैन अप्लाई इट ऑल्सो नॉट अ प्रॉब्लम सो लेट से इफ यू वॉन्ट टू अप्लाई सी टी माइनस ए टी इन दैट केस फॉर प्रोसेस जीरो द कंप्लीशन टाइम इज थ्री एंड अराइवल टाइम वॉज जीरो सो थ्री माइनस जीरो विल गिव अस सो अकॉर्डिंग टू दिस फॉर्मूला वी कैन राइट थ्री इज द कंप्लीशन टाइम माइनस अराइवल टाइम इज जीरो so the turn around time of process 1 is 3 if we apply this formula that waiting time plus burst time waiting time of process 1 we have calculated as 0 and the required burst is given as 3 so 3 plus 0 it will also give you 3 only right so turn around time of process 2 let's say completion time of process 2 is 8 because process p2 is finished by 8 and process p2 was arrived at 1 so that means tat of process 2 was 7 then if we calculate ta2 of tat of process 3 process 3 completion time is 10 minus arrival time of process 3 was 3 so it is also 7 and then calculate the tat of process 4 so turn around time of process 4 the completion time of process 4 is 14 minus arrival time of process 4 is 9 so 14 minus 9 will give you 5 okay now it says that average waiting time of all the processes so if you focus on average waiting time now in case of average waiting time let me write it here so average waiting time will be the sum of all divided by the total number of processes so you can say 0 plus 2 plus 5 plus 1 divided by there are total four processes so average waiting time will be 5 plus 6 8 8 divided by 4 it is 2 now if you calculate the average turnaround time here so let's say here you are calculating average turnaround time so the total is total is 3 plus 7 plus 7 plus 5 3 plus 7 plus 7 plus 5 divided by 4 because there are total four processes so it is 10 plus 12 so you can say 22 divided by 4 it will give us 5.5 okay so i hope with this example you must be clear about the calculation of waiting time and turnaround time average you can obviously calculate you know that right so please do remember these formulas which i have written here so the turnaround time can be calculated as waiting time plus burst time or completion time minus arrival time so please do remember right now let's uh discuss few of the drawbacks of uh, first come first serve so there are certain drawbacks or disadvantages of first come first serve uh, in first come first serve there can be starvation problem a starvation problem can happen when a very you can say a process which is requesting very large number of cpu cycles arrived early so because of that process the remaining processes those may require less number of cpu cycles will be waiting for a very long period of time right because it is non preemptive cpu scheduling and the nature is first come first serve so because of that the other process may be stopped so this may cause a starvation in the system another is low cpu utilization yes because if more requirement of the cpu is there and the process arrived in early the overall waiting time of the system will increase okay so the overall utilization of cpu will go down then high response time so response like the very first response in such kind of case the overall response time for the remaining processes those are waiting may increase right so what is actually the response time 
the response time you consider when a process arrives in ready queue let's say this process arrives in ready queue at let's say one okay and this is p2 and p2 has been scheduled by three so three minus one will give us the response time okay right so when process arrives in ready queue and when it is start getting the cpu very first time that is the response time okay so it is also high it may be high in first come first serve and one drawback processes cannot be preempted no preemption is also one of the disadvantage of first come first serve so let's solve few of the quick questions what is the main disadvantages disadvantage of first come first serve cpu scheduling algorithm so you think an answer and then i'll tell you the answer so the very first option is starvation we have seen that starvation is one of the disadvantage low cpu utilization it is also one of the disadvantage high response time it is also one of the disadvantage and low preemption and no preemption is also one of the disadvantage but here they are asking main disadvantage so the main disadvantage is the starvation starvation is the very prominent disadvantage that should not be there in the system so you need to opt the answer as a okay right move on to the next question which of the following is a non preemptive cpu scheduling algorithm so non preemptive cpu scheduling algorithm i have discussed preemptive and non preemptive so round robin is a preemptive cpu scheduling algorithm you are aware about shortest job first sjf shortest job first actually it is having two flavors one is non preemptive sjf another is preemptive sjf preemptive sjf we also known as the shortest remaining time first so we cannot say sjf is non preemptive because it is in the both category then priority scheduling same case with the priority also priority scheduling can be implemented as no non preemptive case and preemptive case also there so the answer you should mark the d answer that is first come first serve right now let's discuss the next one what is the formula for calculating the waiting time in cpu scheduling so what is the formula to calculate the waiting time i told you so you just think an answer and then i'll tell you the answer you can pause the video right so waiting time the very first says that burst time plus turnaround time burst time plus turnaround time will not give you the waiting time because turnaround time is also you can say waiting time plus burst time so that means waiting time you are considering waiting time plus two burst time it will not be so this will not be true it will be false waiting time is equal to turnaround time minus burst time so if you look at what is turnaround time tat i told you tat is waiting time plus burst time bt means burst time so if you subtract this burst time burst time burst time will be cancelled out and you will find out the waiting time so that means your answer should be b right then the next question is what is the difference between turnaround time and response time in the cpu cdv so what is response time and what is turnaround time now what is turnaround time uh, the very first option says that turnaround time measures the total time taken by a process from submission to the completion so this definition is true we have already discussed turnaround time is the total time when a process arrives in ready queue and after executing when the process finished so, so, so that difference consider as the turnaround time so this is fine second while the response time measures the time taken by a process from submission to the first response produced so that is also fine this is the turnaround time when the process was submitted and when the very first response produced that is considered as the turnaround time or uh, you can say the response time so a is the right answer for this right so this is the right one right so the answer for this question is a so i hope with these examples and this discussion you must be confident on the first come first of cpu scheduling so in next class we will discuss the shortest job first thank you everyone for connecting